welcome back to AP Macroeconomics with your favorite teacher, me, Mr. Fritz. Today we're going to do the production possibility curve. The, it's the beginning of the year again. It's school time. Okay, so the production possibility curve is a graph that is showing scarcity and opportunity cost. So we are showing the trade-off between a country producing two goods, either capital goods or consumer goods. Remember that capital goods are machines and factory equipment that businesses buy in order to produce more goods and services in the future. And consumer goods are things that we buy, things like shoes, uh, clothes, food, candy, chocolate, cookies. Coffee, yeah, that stuff. All right, so this country is deciding between producing these two goods. This curve right here represents the country's productive capacity. How much stuff at most that this country could produce in a given year based on how many resources they have, uh, how much labor they have, how much uh, metal, steel, uh, space for farming, all that kind of stuff. The production possibility curve is bent back in on itself or bowed outward because it is showing that there is an increasing opportunity cost associated with the production of both of these goods. As you add more capital goods, you give up a greater and greater and greater amount of consumer goods and vice versa. As you add more consumer goods, you give up more and more capital goods. If it was an even trade and the opportunity cost stayed constant or stayed the same, the curve would be downward sloping, but it would be a straight line and you'd give up the same amount each time. The opportunity cost is increasing because capital goods and consumer goods aren't necessarily made out of the same stuff. They don't necessarily take the same kind of factory equipment and stuff like that. Or you may even need to retrain workers if you wanted to start making more capital goods because tractors aren't made out of the same things or made with the same skills as producing a shoe. Now, anywhere on this curve is going to be an efficient use of resources. As long as your point is touching this curve, you're using all of your resources efficiently and not wasting anything. The main thing we're gonna be thinking about wasting is labor hours. So we're experiencing full employment if we are touching that curve. Any dot inside the curve is going to represent a recession. If the dot is inside the curve, there is an inefficient use of resources. You're wasting your resources, again, namely labor. So this is going to be showing high unemployment and a recession. So we can still produce as much stuff as we could before. We just currently are not because we're in a recession. Everybody's losing their jobs. Businesses aren't hiring people. Uh, and they're not producing goods and services because nobody's working, so nobody's buying things. And everything's just getting terrible. Any point outside the curve is going to be impossible, infeasible, not doable. We could produce, I don't know, 50 consumer goods and 100 capital goods in one year, but we couldn't make uh, 100 capital goods and 100 consumer goods in one year because we just don't have the resources. Maybe we don't have enough workers, maybe we don't have enough factory space or just land in general. We cannot produce this much. It's impossible. Ah, all right, next. Dunde. No, I need a paper towel with an H. Hooray, I'm back with the paper towel so I can erase. Look at All right, next, we can have a shift of the curve. A shift of the curve would look like this. If we had a shift to the left of the curve, there would be a decrease in this country's production possibility curve or a decrease in the productive capacity. Now, even with full employment, this country can't make as much stuff as it used to. Keep in mind, there is a difference between a recession and a decrease or a shift left of the curve. Uh, a recession would look like this. In a recession, your dot goes inside the curve. We could still make as much stuff as we could before. The factories are still there. The businesses still exist. They're just currently not hiring and not producing stuff. If there is a shift to the left of the curve, then even with full employment or even without wasting any resources, we can no longer make as much stuff as we used to. Things that could cause this to happen would be natural disasters and war. If bombs and hurricanes are destroying infrastructure and factory equipment or even killing people, then we could not make as much as we used to even at our most productive. It could also be immigration with an E, people leaving the country and going somewhere else, maybe Tay Tay Land. If people are leaving the country, even with full employment, you can no longer produce as much as you used to because less people produce less things. If you recall from, I don't know, a minute ago, I told you that this country could not produce at point Z. They could not make both 100 consumer goods and 100 capital goods. It's impossible. However, if there is a shift to the right of the production possibility curve and an increase in the country's productive capacity, then what was formerly impossible is now possible. 
Yay, any, anything is possible. I hate, I hate the Celtics. All right, so the whole thing shifts to the right. And now, even with full employment, with the same amount of people working, we can now make more of everything. Things that'll cause this to happen. Maybe new technology that makes it easier to produce goods and services. Robots on the assembly line, just taking care of business. Uh, or it could be an increase in capital goods. It might not be new technology. It might just be businesses purchasing existing technology and buying machines, robots, factory equipment. And now with more machines per worker, we can produce more goods and services. So if we look here, if our dot starts moving toward capital goods, we would expect that economy to grow in the future and, an, and have an increase in their production possibility curve or their productive capacity. Other things that could cause this, maybe there's immigration. I told you a minute ago that people leaving a country would make that country produce less goods and services. Well, wherever those people are ending up, now have more workers that can produce more stuff and the curve could shift out to the right. It could also be an increased access to resources. Maybe a country was formerly sanctioned and not allowed to trade with other countries. Once those sanctions are lifted, we would expect that country to be able to produce more goods and services and have an increase in their productive capacity now that they have access to resources that they formerly did not. All right, children, that was the production possibility curve. Join me again next time when we, when we talk about something that I haven't, I'm not sure what we're doing next time. And I, 